And uh, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, cocktail hour, apparently, at the Western yes. Lawn Tennis Club. It's um, almost cocktail hour here, 320, 340. Yeah, well, you're, you're climbing there. Quite ready. Six, 639 yeah. here. Yes, well, God, you're so lucky. Um, <laughs> so, hey, guys, thanks for hanging out with us again today or this afternoon, tonight, wherever you are. Uh, Gold Ball Hunting is the podcast, yeah. another episode. This is number, I don't know, 130 plus, somewhere in there. We're cooking yes. along every day. Yeah. Every day. I mean, we're not re literally recording every day, but uh, but we're kind of batching a few, scheduling them out. But we are publishing every day and um, trying to help those tennis players, tournament players, league players, the Wednesday night crew, you know, burgers and buds, and uh, <laughs> you know, a little trash talking. Always good. But everyone, come on, everyone, admit it. You're competitive. You wanna you wanna win the match today. Right, yeah. and it doesn't matter if it's again a tournament, a league, or that Wednesday night crew. I know you're competitive. We all are, and we're here to help you guys, right? <clears throat> and I guess is the way Jeff says it. This is not theory. <clears throat> we're not, you know, yes. opening up. We're not opening up the textbook and talk, talking <clears throat> theoretical. We're not talking history. <clears throat> no, we're talking. Although, although tennis history is fun, and I think. You know, I think current players could do could do well to actually jump in and learn a little more tennis history. The traditions of the game, I think, would be great. Well, that's well, anyway, that's right. I'm keep, not. I'm keep not going. I'm not dissing history. I'm just saying that that's not what we do. Well, maybe that's we're right. teaching a little bit of history. I don't know. It could be a little bit. Um, anyway, so interesting topic for you guys uh, that Jeff and I kind of kicked around before I hit recording that we're going to get into in just a second. Uh, but before we do, Jeff and I are still offering a complimentary free on the house we got your back we got you covered it's a, it's a 10 minute <laughs> no charge it's a 10 minute it's no charge 10 minute private not public we're not going to record it coaching call the three of us we're not going to throw this thing out in the internet it's you know it's it's uh it's uh yeah that's what it is it's private it's uh, anyway, so we get in the call, three way call, and uh, you got to bring that way. It's only 10 minutes, so you got to bring that one thing in your game right now. That uh, if you could figure it out, that uh, maybe you'd be the man or the or the woman every Wednesday night. They'd be yeah. buying you the beers or the wines every Wednesday night, we and like that. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. So to get in that call with us, with me and Jeff, go over to goldballhunting.com, drop in a first name, email address. You'll get access to our online calendar scheduler where you get to cherry pick the date and time that works best for you. Not best for us. We're, you know, on Pacific time zone now. You're East Coast, Eastern, yeah. Eastern time zone. Um, so, yeah, we're really sort of here to serve, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Call. So, yeah. Yeah. Check, you know, c uh, confirm, pick, choose. <laughs> yes. Yes, and then we'll get notified, and it'll be a fun call. So, guys, today's topic, and I hear the, can you hear the the weed whacker guy out there a little bit? Yeah, isn't, isn't that normally like a 10 a.m., 9 no, a.m. thing? Or? I'm thinking, uh, what's going on out there today? <laughs> so, apparently. And he's got, like, so he's, apparently, got, he's got So, the, apparently, they just see what, what your schedule yeah, is. They, they look in there and go. <laughs> Ah, Abel's over there. Uh, he's got the little head things in. Let's go on in there. Let's kind of get. But he's got the out. he's got the motorcycle rev thing going where he can go. Rum, rum. Oh yeah, and the two-cycle like, Kawasaki 125. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man, we should be doing these in the mornings. You know that because uh, probably yes. <laughs> oh, there it is. There's the evidence right there. Um, so, uh, guys, look, here's, here's the deal. I'm still distracted by, by this guy. I'm just going to have to, you know, it's like when you're playing a match and they put you on that court that's next to the parking lot yeah. and, and someone goes out there and decides to somehow open their car door and they, they set off the alarm. And yeah. it's right next to your court. And you're trying to serve and it's just this irritating, yeah. you know, eh, eh, eh. Yeah. And you're looking around, and you know the other guys in the courts are kind of gone. Come on, you got to be kidding me! Really? Yeah. Is so, it like the key fob? Like press the button, right? And of course they look at you like it's a new car. I don't know which one to press. They start looking around. Could you? <laughs> right. Could you help me here a little bit? 
Um, I'm sure anyone listening or watching this episode so far is going, uh, what is yeah, this? We, thing? Is this the, the, yeah. the amateur hour? Because uh, <laughs> That's right. You guys going to get to it <laughs> it's not, at some definitely point? Definitely not the professional hour. Um, yeah. All right. So before we start the recording, I was sharing with Jeff a couple of ideas of what we might talk about today. One of them was based on uh, uh, this thing that's, that's going on over at Tennis Warehouse. Uh, and, you know, I, I've actually bought some stuff over there. It's a great service, one of the original online retail stores for, for tennis equipment. But they've got, what do they call it, Jeff? They've got a, that's not called a blog. It's called a... Uh, it's uh, a forum. It's a forum. Thank you very it's much. It's a forum. Yeah. It's been going on. It's very popular. And uh, a little bit over a year ago, I played a match in Houston that was recorded, video recorded by my opponent, Al Yearwood. And uh, 70 indoors, and he sent me a copy of it. And I actually edited the thing down. I cut out all the between points time and all the side changes time. And I put some scores up there and, you know, tried to cut down a a, a two-set match to maybe about 20 minutes. So, um, and if you're interested in in, in looking at that, it's over at YouTube. You can go over to, uh, it's on my my, uh, uh, YouTube channel, Web Tennis. And uh, I think if you search Al Yearwood, if you search my name, you'll get a list of every video. Obviously, you don't want that. I think there's over a thousand videos on that channel, so that would not be a smart search term. So put in Al Yearwood. If you still can't find it, shoot me an email, Brent at webtennis.com, and I'll I'll send you a link. But someone on that forum a year ago, this was a year ago, March, uh, posted the link as a new post on the forum and said, "Could you beat either one of these seventy-year-olds?" Like. <laughs> we're some kind of, you know, one foot in the grave and, you know, one foot out. Exactly. And, you know, so, everything is like complete <laughs> slow motion, you know. Right. So I, it's the end of the day, so I'm a little punchy here. So all I'm envisioning now is that you and Al go out to the court, and this was the finals? No, this right? was this was my first round. It was his... I'd gotten a buy, and he, and he played around the day before. So God, rough, rough first round. Oh, I mean, this guy, this right? guy after so, after this tournament, the guy goes out and wins like four or five cat twos <laughs> in the next three months. He's good. So, so I'm imagining like the the court is just littered with banana peels. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. No. So anyway, anyway, but so. Um, it was tough. It was tough first round for both of us. You know, it was just it, yeah. was, it was a lousy draw. Yeah. Anyway, but so some guy posted uh, our video of the match uh, over at over at Tennis Warehouse in the forum, and then this this was and I didn't this was posted like maybe around the first of April of 2018. <clears throat> I didn't know about it. Someone brought it to my attention maybe four or five months later. I said, "What? I, what? Okay." <laughs> so I went over there. Good my God, the the thread on this thing was like. You know, it took me like half a day just to just to read this stuff, and it was interesting. So the title was, you know, could you beat either one of these seventy uh, year olds? And and so all these guys, you know, and they're all younger guys, right? They're all younger oh, guys, of course. And, and and they're all just kind of, um, and they're trying to look up and they're trying to compare us NTRP four fives with the you know the UTRs and all this kind of stuff, and and um, you know a lot of guys who were going and look, let's, let's be honest when. When you watch video, oh. even if you watch like like you can watch Rafa play Fed, and you watch it on TV, and you kind of think, "Huh, I think you know, there's probably some of that. I think I could do." And then, <laughs> and then you go, to Indi- and then you go to Indian <laughs> Wells, and you and you get to go, you know, the first couple of days, and you right. stand on the practice courts, and you go, "Oh God." I couldn't do any of that. Right. I couldn't do one tenth of one tenth of one percent of that. Right. Right. I mean. So anyway. Yeah. So look. So here are a couple seven years. Your your simple seven year olds out there, on the video, and it, yeah, I'll admit it looks like it's in. You know what? What? What did you guys decide to do this in slow mo? I mean, I know you edited the video, Brent, but you know maybe you should have right. you know sped it up. So anyway. So a lot of guys are going, um, oh, my God, I just, I just kicked those guys, those old guys' asses. I mean, I just run them all over. And, I, you know, and then, then other guys are coming in going, 
go, well, you know, I'm not so sure. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, these guys have both got four or five ratings, and I know Brent had a 5-0 rating until recently, and, and so I don't know. I mean, um, maybe the video, you know, whatever. And Right, so, video adds 10 pounds. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, so, um, so there was, and, and so I actually did did some responding, and I said, "Hey, look, guys, I, um, this is cool. I love this. I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I appreciate you guys that have taken some time to think about this. You know, the bottom line is this: is that it doesn't matter whether or not you could beat a seventy year old. It doesn't matter. It doesn't prove anything, right?" And, right. and so trying to figure out if you could or if you couldn't doesn't mean anything. What I hope you got from this is that, geez, here's a couple of 70-plus-year-old guys who are actually, they look like they're in pretty darn good shape, and they're running around, and they're hitting some shots. And they look pretty efficient doing this thing. Um, yeah, just like us, they make some unforced errors. Okay, they're kind of human right. beings. But I said, I said really what, what I'm hoping is that this inspires you that there's hope. You know, if you're 40 freaking years right. old right now, we're, we're almost twice your age. And look, we're out there competing and, and we're having a great time. And, and so hopefully it's, it's sort of firing you up to, right. yeah, I think, I think to one, one guy was really being kind of a, a, a jerk. And I, and I says, I said, okay, look, have you got a video that you could post up here for us? Can we just take a look at how good you are? You know, right. crickets, nothing. <laughs> And I waited a few days. I got back. I said, I said, okay. All right. When was the last time you played a tournament? Crickets. Nothing. Crickets. <laughs> so, so anyway, but, um, and then I got back on it today or no, I guess, I guess it was this morning. I, I, I read something somewhere and it had a link and I went over and looked at it and the thread now from, you know, from then until right. I saw it last fall to now is like another, you know, going on and on and on. And so, one guy was talking about, or someone said, man, you know, look at the slice backhand. It's beautiful and all this kind of stuff. And some guy's going, oh, man, that's just wussy tennis. You know, playing a slice backhand. Look at it. And Abel even a couple of times had to play a slice forehand. Are you kidding me? And, and I said, you know, I used to do it, but that's just, that's just for, I don't know. He probably said a bad word or something like that. And it was kind of, <laughs> anyway, so it got me thinking as we talked about, um, about how we, how when we compete, really when we compete, especially in tournaments, when, if you're going to, and what's the title here, gold ball hunting, if you're going to hunt for even a bronze, yeah. you're going to be there on the last day because that means that you lost the day before the tournament's over in the semifinals. Right. That means <clears throat> that you probably played, you know, to get to the last day, you've probably played a minimum of four if not right. five matches to get into the finals or to be able to play for the bronze uh, right. because you lost the semi. So, so to me, the whole thing got about, ah, you should be topping the forehand, you should be topping the backhand. And I was thinking, you know, God, it's so inefficient. It's so inefficient in terms of conserving energy. So right. the thought I had, and here's what I'm going to, and I've been blah, 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 and haven't let you, because I know you're chomping at the bit over there. <laughs> Either that or about to fall asleep. But is that, one way to think about competing is to is is to be as efficient as possible with stroke mechanics, with movement, court position, and mental, where you're not all over the emotional scale mentally, no matter what's happening, and that you're doing that in every point, you're still trying to inflict a little bit of pain. So there's pain that you're, even though you're being super efficient, you're not totally pushing, right. but you're being efficient, but you're still inflicting a lot of pain so that in the present there's a little pain, but it's, it's accumulating over, over time. Right. And I think a lot of players don't think that, well, I, it, it, they don't think about the big picture. No. Of, of, no. Of, are, you, are you always going for the knockout punch or are you working the body and just, and just chopping the tree down? Right. And, yeah. And Until, so, so are you, you know. leaking fuel because right. you're you for a set and a half, man, you're, you're topping everything and you're looking like a million bucks out there. And then you get to three all in the second you go, Oh, I, right. 
I'm a and little the guy's tired. Just, and the other guy over there has been... The guy's just rope-a-doping you. Right. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> anyway, um, what do you think? Well, listen, I think, I think, you know, it's always, you know, again, Monday morning quarterback... Sunday. And, and by the way, well, I'm not upset. I'm not upset with the haters over yeah, there yeah. because I've I've been hearing this since the moment I got online in 1999. You know, I got I got a little bit bristled yeah. first couple times. And I went, wait a minute, that's just that's just the life online. So look, I'm I'm not. If, if that's what you're about to do is say, yeah, tell yeah, these yeah. guys to shut up. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going there. No, no. Why why waste the energy again? Efficiency. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, and literally, I mean, on the. On the emotional, you know, mental side of it, it's, you know what, um, Rich Anderson, you know, NorCal legendary coach at Kenyatta College, one of the greatest lessons I learned from him was very simple. Let your racket do the talking. End of story. That's it. Yeah. Right. And so your, your record speaks for itself. My record speaks for itself. I don't need to prove anything to anybody and neither do you. If somebody wants to compare and figure, you know, try and figure out what, you know, could I, would I, oh, I would do this, oh, they should do that. Well, listen, when anybody starts a sentence with, you should, my eyes glaze over and I start to drool because it's like, okay, wait a second, you're starting the conversation off really in a bad foot here with you should. Hey, I got this idea, you know, you're doing this, maybe you should Okay. Well, the Wait Jimmy Parker, who we interviewed re recently, if Jimmy Parker has <laughs> won 144 gold balls, wow. If he says, ah, fellas, you know, I think you should, and I'm going, Jimmy, give it. Right. Give it. But if you're <laughs> right. on some tennis warehouse forum, <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I might, you know, I might, you know, whatever. Anyway, so, you know, it is, it, it's, it's so easy, you know, again, to be the Monday morning quarterback and the, the, the lazy boy, you know, watcher on a Sunday afternoon watching the finals of an event, watching Fed or watching right now. If you're on Tennis Channel, you can see the NCAA, uh, you know, tournament. Um, gosh, of course, it's easy from the perspective from 3000 miles away. Yeah. Right. Um, see what's going on, because the perspective is you, you're not here's the part of it that is, is so elusive that is never factored into that. Oh, why don't you just do this is the emotional and mental part of competition. That is the most, the biggest, hardest, most elusive it's Bigfoot. It is the snow leopard of the, of the Himalayas. It's Yeti. It is, you know, I, we could go on and on with all the mythical, you know, the unicorn, whatever. Yeti. You, you, can't, you can't quantify that match to match, day to day, uh, opponent to opponent. Yeah. Because some opponents have gotten under your skin and they own you. And, and you have to, it's hopefully at some point in your career, whether you're a 3 0, a 3 5, on up to Fed. You've got to come to terms with that on any given day and come up with a solution. Get you've got to somehow solve that, right? So, so the the speculation in a forum is so you know is so uh, lacking that part of it. Oh, I would just do this. They should be just doing this. And really, it's it's like it's like theory going into battle. Well, the theory says I should do X, Y, Z. Well, now that I have boots on the ground and I'm seeing, I'm looking over the rise here and I, and I see that, wow, there's 10 times more guys coming for us than I thought. <laughs> you might have to renegotiate the game plan. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. I think that's the, that's the biggest part of it. And, you know, listen, we've all done it. You know, I mean, Brenny, you know, as, as you know, back in, back in the opens, you know, playing the smaller pro events in NorCal, you know, we all sat around. Once we had, you know, probably closer to three beers, the, uh, you know, how many, you know, who do you have indirects over? Right. Right. Knowing That's that right. You, you beat so-and-so and that guy took a set off of Connors. Right. I beat so-and-so and that guy beat right. whoever. That's beat, right. You know, whatever. Yeah. And so I think, 
you know, those are all fun. They're fun conversations because I've been in them yeah. and they're great. They get animated and they're a lot of fun and yeah. all that. But you know what? At the end of the day, um, tennis is one of those just beautiful, unbelievable sports that if you're really willing to step into the arena, <clears throat> it is a reflection of you. You are coming face to face with your own demons and tennis just serves it up to you on a silver platter. And are you willing to take the journey? Yeah. Well, and, look, I mean, I think know. that uh, I think that it's um, you're right. It, it's easy to kind of do the the Monday morning quarterbacking deal or armchair thing, whatever it is. Um, and I would venture to say that if you're playing a lot of tournaments, that um, that you're probably not doing most of that because you understand the reality that there's there's there it's it's just not as simple as looking at a couple of 70 year old guys and going well you know i'd take them down because i would do this this and this and yeah you might you might do it once now would you do it every time i don't know and it could be geez that one time when oh okay well let's see if you can do it maybe that's the one out of ten times that i get you and now what are you going to do you know so um but the point i really want to make here jeff is that is that um it, it, it's more about the efficiency of making sure. Right. So I would tell guys, look, if, if you're dissing uh, a slice backhand or if you're dissing a slice forehand or if you're dissing a drop shot, <laughs> you know, um, don't. Because you may be working yourself into a nice hot lather, you know, where we can start right. to see the we can start to see the white foam starting to come out of the side here. <laughs> You're yeah, really we call the... that we we call that road hard and put away wet. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure what that means, but I, I think it's 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 a it's, I, it's, I, it's a it's a it's a horse term. Yeah, where, yeah you okay, know, right. You, it's road hard and put away wet. Yeah, yeah. Is, you know what you're not not supposed to do. That's so right. anyway, <laughs> that's right. Okay, we'll get we'll get. So, um, just because you think that you ought to be topping everything, or that you ought to be pounding everything really hard, that you ought to be doing this and doing that. And you might be winning some points. And you know what? You might win the first set that way. But you might have been leaking oil the entire time. Right. And you don't know it. You don't know it. So um, I would encourage everyone to think about how can you play points in the most efficient way. If you've got an efficient topspin forehand drive, out of sight. Awesome. That's beautiful. But if you're really working it, man, if you've got a massive grip and you're really working that windshield wiper and you're grunting and you're groaning and you're going to come on <laughs> every time you win a point because, you know, the guy's, you know, the guy's a 4-0 <laughs> and he, he misses a shot, uh, come on. Let's, 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 let's think about how you're going to actually start winning four or five rounds in one week. You know, right. it's some place that you've spent some money to go travel to, and uh, you're having to play with different conditions. You're out of your comfort zone. You're out of your venue, your comfy little confines at your club. You need to get efficient and right. and think about, uh, as you said in the beginning, not bringing the big thunder, but think about well, how could I efficiently start to ding this guy a little bit, point after point after point, right. a little nick here, a little nick there. You said a little jab, a little jab, and then... Over time, the guy's right. hands are going to start to drop, and you go boom, and there you go. It's you know, in fact, in fact, Jimmy even mentioned it um, when we did the interview with him. That, and, and I'm not sure how he said it, but he said it basically in, in the terms that you can't take anybody lightly. Whatever your preconceived is, oh, this guy's you know, if you're a four zero and you got to play a three five guy first round, your biggest mistake will be to take him lightly. And walk out to the court overly arrogant and thinking, oh, I got this, no big deal, because you are no longer now ready to play ball. Well, or, and, or, or on the other hand. And anything can happen that day. Yeah, yeah, well, and or you could be scared to death. Is that, right. I, I'm a 4 0, I got to play a 3 5. What if? What if right. I lose to this guy? And if that's your mindset, well, the chances just start going way up in this guy's favor that you're going to get tighter right. than a, than a freaking snare drum out there. So, and and I know and, what happens is guys goes, well, I better blow this three five guy out of here with my big topper, 
my big backhand <laughs> topper over and over and you get so tight, I mean, balls are just getting shanked, you know, into the next zip code because because they right. are so so anyway well listen guys a uh, bit of a rant here today on my <laughs> part uh, so i didn't mean to offend anybody and i certainly didn't mean to offend anyone over at tennis warehouse i love the forum over there i think it's a great service and uh and i actually love the thread because um of that of, of, of that video of me and al just because it's interesting to me to see how players are thinking, what they yeah. think about, and how they perceive the game, and 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 the reality of of what's not being taught out there. Um, totally, you know, totally. of of not helping players, and you know, I didn't want to do much teaching. I didn't want to say to you guys, "Hey, you guys, you know, until you show me some video or until you start playing tournaments, you know." Blah, blah. No, no, I didn't want to do that, but. I didn't want to get into an instructional thing, but it just kind of concerns me that there's such a a tidal wave of teaching right. that is based on well, the only way to play the game is you gotta you gotta top this and you gotta top that, and if you don't, you're not playing tennis. So anyway, okay. So so any anybody who's thinking in that thread, and this is contemporary tennis, YouTube Fab Fabrice Santoro. The magician, absolutely stunning, beautiful cat and mouser. The one of the greatest of all time. Enough said. Mic drop. <laughs> Enough said, and I think he drove Fed crazy, crazy many times. As everybody, right? Crazy. And if you're saying that that because I think a lot of guys out there are saying, well, you know, look, you know, the slicing and the dicing and and the drop shotting uh, is more of a social status. Well, I can't really do that because guys are going to say, well, that's not really tennis. So I don't want to be like that. And I guess what you're saying is Fabrice um, Santoro is, I mean, you wouldn't want to be in the tour then, right? You wouldn't want to go in the tour. You wouldn't <clears throat> want to play every one of the Grand Slams. <laughs> I, I got a hunch of Santoro. I don't think he. I know he didn't win any Grand Slam singles, but I think he won some Grand Slam doubles. I could yeah, be I wrong so. on that, but you know, I might not be wrong on that. But world class player, world class freaking tennis player. That guys totally. That, that, that guys will look at the draw for next week and go, oh god damn it, I got hated. I got Santoro, man, of my half. Hated of the draw. having to play him first. Yeah, totally. I mean, it was like Brad Gilbert. Again, yeah, one like of, Bradley, probably one of the who, greatest. Who, who one of the greatest. Just, I don't know. I don't know if he'd like the Monic I don't know whether he'd like you know counter puncher or not. But Bradley, talk about a guy who knows how to compete. Oh, huh. and talk about who was smart, uh, who, who who knew how to give a Boris Becker exactly what he didn't want. Oh my gosh! Talk about crawling under a guy's skin. I mean, and <laughs> it can go nutty. <laughs> and you were talking about how, how we used to back in the days we'd be playing tournaments and after three beers talk about the indirect over the indirect over the indirect we had. So my my claim to fame my claim to fame is yeah I've got a doubles win over Brad Gilbert. Now, do I have to tell you that he had a cast on his left arm <laughs> all the way to the elbow so that when he tossed in a serve his arm just kept going. It was like he did, his left arm would do a 360 and then he'd come back. And, you know, I mean, that's why, and look, so having a cast on your, uh, half a cast on your left arm is a bit of an impairment. Uh, and we actually played, uh, we played him and his brother, Barry, who, who, was, who was a darn good player. He was never a world-class player, but yeah. he was, you know, before we had the NTRP, he was, you know, he was a 5-0 guy, I think, and, and uh five, oh, five, five, right in there, no doubt. He, something. Was, you know, he, was a, he was a top open NorCal player. So we're playing we're playing Barry and Bradley, and Bradley's got half the cast on his left arm, and and we're just somehow in the match, right? I mean, Bradley's obviously pretty pretty well impaired, and and Barry's missing a few shots, and the brothers are like brothers, right? They're just going at each other, at grinding each other. Each other. Right. <laughs> And though we get in the tiebreaker in the first set and we somehow luck it out, completely luck it out, and we win it. 
and they both just kind of went, you know, and they both have got kind of the curly uh, hair, right. you know, they, they had like triple afros after that, after that thing, man. And then we beat up love in the second because they just, you know, Bradley just going, oh, whatever, yeah, whatever, I just want out of here. Right. So I, I have to condition my, my best win over Brad Gilbert that he had a cast on his left arm. <laughs> he had a broken arm. <laughs> That's right. So. Uh, oh, that's so good. Uh, anyway. All right, guys, uh, I think we better get out of here. I, yeah. think we, I think we started this off as amateur hour, and we finished it off pretty well as amateur hour. So anyway, hopefully we get some good comments on this. Uh, before we go, if you'd like to actually spend some private time with us on a 10-minute coaching call, that would be a shock. But uh, it's, it's free. We might even pay you to get on the call. Uh, oh. Anyway, to get in a, a coaching call is uh, go over to goballhunting.com, drop in a first name, email address, click the button, don't forget that, and then you'll get immediate access to our online calendar where you can pick a date and time to hang out with us and, um, you know, hopefully we can point you in the right direction. <laughs> so, Jeff, what would we like to find folks to do right now? <laughs> I have no idea. Besides unsubscribe. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Like us? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Share us. Yes. Please subscribe. Yeah. And let us know what you think. Maybe not tonight. Oh, well. Anyway. <laughs> or maybe. <laughs> All right. On that, get out there today. Help someone else. <laughs> uh, help someone else because we probably put you in a mood where you're feeling depressed. So anyway, help someone yes. else have a spectacular day. <laughs> Jeff, I think we should try and do this again tomorrow. Uh, I think so. <laughs>